Hey everybody, I'm back to answer more of your questions. So I'm just going to dive right in like I did last time. First question comes from one search. So they asked me how to get the pop off, uh, pop a blocker off um, so that they can get uh, watch my videos with ads. Uh, I use Google Chrome and I'm too lazy to find out. Um, so I, it would depend on what pop-up blocker you use. Um, I did mention when I did the uh, partnership video that if you have a pop-up blocker, um, you can disable it temporarily uh, just to uh, give me or any other YouTube partner um, a little bit of ad revenue. And then you can go ahead and you can enable it. If I can find the name of it, because I actually had someone else install my pop-up blocker for me. Um, I've got what is called Adblock Plus. And what mine does is it's a little icon on the right hand side of the um, URL bar on Google Chrome. I use Google Chrome as well. It's just a little like stop sign. It says ABP. All I have to do is left click on it and it will say enabled for the site, which means the pop up blocker is working for the specific site that I'm on. Um, all I have to do is disable it. Um, it will disable it temporarily and then all I have to do is click enable again when I'm done. So I would probably suggest that as a pop up blocker to this person asking this question or to anybody else who uh, wants to get a pop-up blocker that you can easily access. It's it's a pop-up blocker I've used for the last like three computers I've had, so I like it. It's a good pop-up blocker. works effectively. Uh, thank you, by the way, for uh, wanting to watch ads. That really means a lot to me. It's really awesome of you. Um, second question is, have I ever watched Gundam Wing? Um, no, I haven't. I know what it's about. At least I think I do. It's about like flying mecha. I think, um, but no, um, anime is like a big black blurb of things I don't know in this world, so I'm not even gonna try and embarrass myself any further, so answer that question is no, obviously. Um, Twilight Saria asks, have I ever played a, a game in the Bomberman series? I used to play it with my brother when I was little and I loved it. I would highly recommend it for a future LP of yours. Yes, I have. So actually, when I was younger, uh, on the N64, there was a game called Bomberman Hero. Absolutely awesome game. Um, I really recommend it. It is so much fun. Um, it's a platformer, but it is, it is a blast. It's challenging and it's quite lengthy actually for a platformer and it's a lot of fun. Um, I was debating doing it for the video game hub. That was actually what I was going to do instead of Hamtaro, but I just really wasn't feeling like <laughs> putting the effort into it because it is actually pretty uh, a reasonably sized game. So yeah, I've definitely played um, Bomberman Hero. I'm sure I've played other ones um, where it's like the traditional Bomberman type style where you try to like blow up your opponents on like a map. I think that's usually what the actual like traditional style is, but Bomberman Hero is like a like an action platformer and yeah, it's it's great. So yes, I have played it. Um the one I have played is awesome and it is definitely in my plans for a future LP. So thank you for that. You must have read my mind or something. And the second question I ask is what is it like to live in Canada? Um, they list examples like the weather, uh, political climate, and if I like it as a whole. So I've never lived anywhere else except for Canada. Um, I have traveled to the US and to Europe. Uh, so I've seen different kind of um, living situations and standards of living. So a little bit of geography for everybody. I live on Vancouver Island, which is on the west coast of Canada, and I'm pretty much, I, well, it's, obviously it's an island, I'm wedged in between the border of Seattle and um, the city of Vancouver. So I live in a uh, really, really warm um, area. I'm surrounded by the ocean, so there's a lot of precipitation. Um, so no, where I live now is not stereotypically cold. We usually get to about an average of, I would say like 23 degrees Celsius in summer, which is not too hot, not too cold. It's perfect. And uh, all year round, we get lots of like wind and rain. It rains constantly where I live. Um, in winter, it usually never gets any colder than minus four degrees, like minus five is like the coldest you'll ever uh, have it um, here. So it's very, very warm in the winter, very, very mild in the summer, uh, high precipitation and a lot of rain. So that's the weather where I live now. Um, 
and political climate i live in a pretty small area i mean it has everything you you, you want um and all the extras like it was like a luxury living here when i when i first moved because you've got all the cool stuff i mean you have all the restaurants and like starbucks and mortons and uh lots of like opportunities for colleges um lots of schools to go to um lots of job opportunities like it's got it's really rich in opportunities um really quite diverse and not too crowded but not too small either so um, that's really nice and I definitely like where I live now um, for those of you who want to know where I used to live where I used to live is like complete polar opposites so I've always lived in the same province I live in the province of British Columbia but I used to live in the interior um, of British Columbia so I used to live in a place that like I said 3,000 people middle of nowhere um, we had we didn't have a university or a college or anything where I lived my high school was grade 8 to 12 with a population like a like kids uh, there was only like 400 people in all of those grades my elementary school was uh, kindergarten to grade 7 I don't even have a middle school we had no McDonald's, no Starbucks, no Tim Hortons, no swimming pool for a while, no bowling alley, no movie theater, like none of that stuff. Um, so where I used to live was like complete polar opposite. Um, in the summer, it would get to be like 20 degrees Celsius maybe and like minus 30 degrees in, in winter. So where I used to live was more like stereotypical Canada, like a lot of snow, really cold um you know living up in like igloo land essentially so um both kind of had its ups and downs i think when i was younger living in a smaller place wasn't a big deal because i could just go outside and not have a care in the world and you know who cares but as i got older um and i moved away it was really a smart choice because i was able um to go to a place with more people um meet more people do more things have a lot more fun growing up being a teenager and being able to you know go to university and stuff like that so yeah so I like living in Canada um, I've never lived in another province so I, I can't really say much so yeah thank you for your questions uh, the next questions come from my friend Mel Percy oh god so I'm just gonna scroll up here so his questions are first one is uh, with your rise in popularity and getting the partnership and all you won't forget about those who have been here since the beginning, will you? You will always remember us, right? So this question is kind of funny because um, with Paris Your God, I actually know personally. Um, we kind of became friends through YouTube. So, um, no, I feel like the people that I've met uh, through YouTube and the people who were there from the beginning are, like, the most important people. Um, I'm really... No, I wouldn't say like super close, but most people who I met uh, really early in my YouTube, I guess, career um, have really stuck with me and are so important to me. Um, like uh, like Lamana57, we talk personally. Uh, he's a really good friend of mine. Um, oh, Paris, oh God, I know you. Uh, you've been around um, since the beginning as well. You're very supportive and helpful and very honest, which I appreciate. Um, Rectum, my friend Roman, uh, first person I ever met on YouTube. We still talk and we, you know, we still keep up and watch each other's videos and give each other tips and hints and stuff. Um, you know, Basic Sweet Six, Nice to Delete Penguin, W Takes Jaichi, like I knew those guys so long ago and, um, I just feel like the longer you know people, the more important they become. So, of course, I will never forget you guys without um, your guys' support. I wouldn't be here, probably, um, because, like I said, a lot of you were very supportive and um plugging me and letting me uh commenting on videos and stuff like that so just a lesson to everybody of course when you move up in the world don't forget about the people who got you there um because without them you really wouldn't be anything so and don't i didn't forget that we're supposed to be doing twilight princess um he's the person who suggested i play twilight princess um for the uh last special i did so I didn't forget that, I won't forget you, and I won't forget any of my really awesome friends. So, uh, second question he asks me is, since uh, I'm going to PAX, will you be videotaping any of it? any of it if i can't go i want to see something of it uh, well spoiler alert uh yeah so in april i am going to a convention uh called pax east and it is in uh, boston massachusetts if you watch someone like nintendo capri sun or lucogen um they attend uh, pax east i think they've attended it they attended it at least last year um and i'm going with a few friends so 
I'm going to PAX East in April. I am stoked beyond anyone's imagination. It is like something I'm totally looking forward to. And yeah, of course I'll videotape it. Um, when I travel, I take shit tons of pictures to the point where people are like, okay, get it out of my face. I get it, you want to take pictures. I'm really annoyed. Um, and I, of course, want to show you guys because it's something that uh, you can relate to because it's kind of like a it's kind of like a video gaming convention kind of like a really ghetto e th e3 kind of i guess if that's a good way to explain it for those of you who don't know uh, what pax is it's got like you know stalls and you can um like test games and they have panels and speakers and things like that so yeah so i'm really excited to go it'll be a lot of fun it'll be a lot of fun to go to the convention and a lot of fun uh to meet people in real life that I know on YouTube that I've been talking to for like a year or more. Um, I think that's actually what I'm most excited about. Um, but yeah, I, I can't wait. I'm pretty stoked. So, so Captain Don Keys, my friend Alex, um, he wants to ask two questions. So first one is of any of my Xbox 360 achievements, which one was the most difficult to get? Um, so I am a gigantic, what you call, like, achievement whore. So when I get a game for Xbox, I try to get as many of the achievements I can before I actually put down the game. Um, and I would probably say, I wouldn't say the most difficult, but I would say, like, the most agonizing achievements to get. Um, I have 100% of all achievements in Final Fantasy XIII, which was insanely... Uh, time consuming and difficult and super agonizing there are some achievements in that game like collecting every single item ever like, like every piece of like i think um like weapon and armor and stuff that took for freaking ever because there's so much collecting to be done and like you can't backtrack because the game's linear so um i had to keep a really close attention to detail to get those um and then there's another one for like three starring I think or five starring a bunch of like missions or challenges where you like fight monsters and you get a grade for it. That was really difficult. I actually uh, spent a huge amount of time doing that. I had to look up like different strategies from different let's players and it was it was a huge mess. So Final Fantasy 13 was a game that I 100%ed but it took me long a uh, very long time with agonizing and painful but I guess it's I don't know something I can flaunt around if that's something to flaunt around um i don't know if i'll do that for x2 or final fantasy 13 2 I, I have to see what the achievements are so yeah so that'd probably be my answer that game just in general was really hard to 100 percent um second is if you could have any character as your sidekick regardless um if it's a protagonist antagonist or side character uh who would it be so that's really difficult because there are so many amazing video game characters on the face of the planet. So yeah, I, f I find that really hard to answer. I would say something from like Legend of Zelda. So I would say like Midna. Uh, Midna would be an awesome sidekick to have because she's sweet but she's sarcastic and she's sassy. And I just feel like I would get along with Midna really well. Like we would, we would work well together. We would get girl power going and we would work really well together. Uh, Midna and plus she can like transport me and I can turn into like an animal and go like anywhere I want. And I can transport like big things with the power of her hair. So yeah, so I feel Midna would be um, just like a super amazing um sidekick to have and for some reason i can't think of like anything off the top of my head right now which sounds stupid uh this q a i didn't actually like practice any of these questions beforehand so that's kind of hard to answer but since i know alex personally and we talk like every single day i'm sure if i come up with a better answer for him uh i can just tell him and we'll talk about it I'm trying to look at my my gaming library and think if there's like anybody off the top of my head I can think of but yeah I would say Minna would be really cool uh Tetra would also be really awesome Tetra would be a really cool sidekick to have because again she is just like one hell of a woman and she's pretty darn cool she's one of those girls that can like defend herself she's, like not completely tit useless like Princess Peach which I which I admire in a chick so yeah I guess that's it um for this set this is actually taking me a lot longer than I expected because I'm rambling a lot so sorry um, I will probably finish up the rest of your, of your questions in the next video, hopefully, so thanks for watching, and see you then.